Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is a picture from MIT University of a recent study that actually is trying to create something like this. Something that's going to be levitating on the moon. And the technology itself is somewhat intriguing. So today let's discuss exactly what the scientists are planning to do, why they're trying to create this, but also discuss some of the previous similar devices that a lot of different scientists over the years have tried to introduce here on planet Earth. The devices we usually refer to as ion-propelled aircraft, or more simply ionocraft, the simple design of which is seen right here. And so in other words, this is not just some science fiction or something that's not scientific. This is an actual phenomenon based on the idea of electromagnetism, and in this case it's going to be harnessing something that's natural on the moon. Something that's also sort of visible in this beautiful shot from one of the Apollo missions that shows an unusual glow on the surface of the moon, in essence formed by all of this dust levitating above the surface of the object. And as one of the previous studies from a few years ago by NASA explained, all of this is of course caused by electrostatic repulsion from the surface of the moon with a lot of dust particles then levitating above the surface. And to some extent this is actually one of the biggest hazards for astronauts going back to the moon. All of these levitating dust particles also happen to be relatively sharp, and in the past they've even caused problems for the astronaut suits even going through several layers of the outer surface, and so in some sense this dust can cause some major problems for future colonies as well. It's very abrasive and it does have a tendency to get in a lot of different places where it shouldn't be. But at the same time, because of all of the static repulsion here, which you can read more about from the NASA article in the description, this also creates a somewhat interesting opportunity for potentially creating various types of floaters or levitating machines on the surface of the moon by using the electromagnetic repulsion from the surface and combining it with just the right material. In the past, some scientists suggested that maybe we could use something like mylar, more officially known as biaxially oriented polyethylene terephthalate, and essentially build tiny robots out of this, or tiny microfires out of this, and then have them float around the surface of the moon and explore the moon that way. But the thing is, there's a limit to how large we can build an object in order for us to actually use this as an effect, and anything over a certain size or a certain mass is unfortunately going to have to fight a lot of gravity and probably not fly anywhere. But then the scientists behind this particular study decided to take it a slightly different way. They actually focused more on what we already do here on planet Earth with a lot of previous, I guess, inventions and actual patents when it comes to ionifiers or ionocraft here on planet Earth. Now these have been actually proposed decades and decades ago and these officially were some of the first ideas for an ability for us humans to fly around. And this article in the description goes through some really advanced designs that were proposed by this wonderful person, Major Desiversky, back in the 60s. And he actually had quite a lot of designs with some small working prototypes that eventually ended up in some really incredible Soviet art, suggesting that we might one day have these helicopter-like devices that would operate entirely through the use of electromagnetism. But despite solid ideas, and despite the fact that this is actually quite physically possible, what was not possible is that at some point you reach the weight, or I guess mass, where these things don't really work anymore. As a matter of fact, the only project I know of where something that's relatively heavy was levitated above the ground using these techniques is the somewhat hilarious French project known as the Lifter Project, where this little wonderful guy became the first electronaut back in 2003, with this cool shot right here basically making this the hero of the day. But as far as I know, this ratatouille right here, that's the only example of an actual animal in flight using ionopropulsion or ionocraft technology, where the principle is, well, it's actually kind of simple. This is known as the Biefeld-Brown effect, and it results from having two electrodes of different shape and different charge. For example, having a small or a sharp electrode and a big and large and airy electrode, it actually becomes possible to create a kind of a ionic wind or basically movement of air itself that then starts pushing on one of the parts, usually the larger electrode, and thus produce pressure or necessary lift to then levitate certain objects slightly above the ground. 
And both of the electrodes have to have opposite charge and the voltage between them also has to be relatively high. For example, in this patent from, I guess, 1958, the voltage here is in the thousands, 15,000 as a matter of fact. And the first known patent is from back in 1934. But despite this, this effect really only works for smaller, less massive objects. Once you reach a certain weight, no matter how big you make this, it's going to be extremely difficult to make this levitate. Which is precisely the problem that a lot of people face when they started making this into bigger devices. And also why this is still the only known example of a levitating ionocraft passenger or electronaut. Oh, and by the way, this article is also in the description below. But this design still works for smaller objects. It works really well, as a matter of fact. For example, in this really interesting PhD dissertation from University of Berkeley, the proposed design is, well, it's actually really small, but it seems to work really well. It's kind of based on the quadrocopter design, with the four sides here being the ionocraft engines. And each of them only requires a relatively small amount of current to then allow the object to levitate and even have somewhat precise control. And so this idea definitely works, and it could technically work in other settings as well, including asteroids and possibly even airless moons. And so the scientists in this paper propose a slightly different mechanism. They essentially propose a levitating device based on electrostatic repulsion, where instead of basically using air for ionized propulsion, they basically use ionic emitters on the craft itself to then change the actual charge of the craft, making it even more repulsive. And this increase in repulsion then causes the object to start floating above the ground. In other words, the principle here is to just float above the ground based on the already existing charge on the surface of the moon or any asteroid. But in order to make this object float, especially if it's a little bit heavier, the negative charge inside the object is going to be decreased even further by using tiny ion beams located on the craft itself to change the charge of the craft, making it more repulsive. With the initial tests suggesting that this seems to work really well and might actually work on the moon or various other asteroids, assuming that they do have that negative charge needed and also assuming that the craft itself is no heavier than 500 to maybe 900 grams or approximately 2 pounds. Which of course means that in theory, similar to how the Hayabusa 2 probe from the Japanese space agency used these tiny probes to explore the surface of the Ryugu asteroid, it's going to be maybe possible to create something similar that doesn't just sit on the surface, but actually levitates around and explores the surface more actively by using the repulsive forces that every one of these asteroids seems to possess because of the solar interaction. And by floating around, you can also avoid all kinds of obstacles and all kinds of different types of rocks and potentially create microflyers that could transport a lot of smaller things on the surface of the moon. So assuming that this works just as well as it does with typical moon dust, the actual potential here is quite incredible. In theory, future colonies, specifically crude colonies, that are going to be residing here might be able to use this for actual transportation of all sorts of resources from one location to another. So levitation might be the way to go when it comes to the moon. But here on Earth, that's a different story. Here, once again, except for Orville right here, no one else is probably ever going to do this unless we build something ridiculously large. And so at least for now, we're going to have to stick to smaller objects or other objects like the moon or various types of asteroids. Nevertheless though, it's a really, really cool creation or potential creation and it's a really cool concept that could maybe work in some of the future missions. And once someone actually tries this somewhere, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and check out all the relevant links, including the links about Orville, about human levitation when it comes to Ionocraft, which by the way never happened, and a lot of other cool articles in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.